we have now discussed master production schedule and bill of materials so next next let's look at the inventory records so inventory that's available in stock and we have to have accurate inventory records in the system we talked about cycle counting in chapter 12 and and that's very important so if you you need to do cycle counting to make sure that the inventory record that in that is in the computer is accurate with the actual physical availability so accurate inventory records are absolutely required for MRP or any dependent demand items to operate correctly and any mistakes there generally MRP systems require more than 99 percent accuracy because even if there is small discrepancies the computations are such that a lot of snowballing effects will occur and you end up with plans that are not accurate that are not useful now the fourth item is the purchase orders outstanding and this is called scheduled receipts and these are items that are not in our stock but they're going to be in our stock there is a promised delivery date for these items now the fifth component is the lead time so the lead time is the if it is a vendor order it is the time between you placing your order and the order coming in and if it is production order it is the sum of all the wait time and cycle time and production time and everything included so the time between you placing the order with the shop floor and the time when the order is completed and the stock is made available here is an example of components that the bill of materials that we saw in the previous video and for each of these items okay, a being the top level item and these are the components and if these are the lead times now one thing we can do is try to figure out what is the overall lead time to producing the final product A and remember that is not simply a sum of the lead times because some of these items can be w produced in parallel so you, you cannot simply add up all the lead times and say that is the overall lead time for producing part the final product A so we have to develop what is called time phased product structure so time phased product structure we have time on the x axis and then y axis it doesn't matter there is no y axis actually so you plot the items according to the bill of materials so you take the bill of materials which is top to bottom and then just rotate it 90 degrees clockwise and make sure that the these lines are lead time based on the scale of the x-axis so once you build that then you start from the leftmost point so this is the starting of week one and then you number the weeks all the way down this way so now week seven the eight here is the big end of seven it's not week eight so remember we are starting out with one here so the beginning of week one beginning of week two and so on so this is the beginning of week seven so the overall lead time is seven weeks if you simply add the lead times you'll get three to five five to seven twelve twelve weeks but but in fact the overall lead time is only seven weeks because some of those weeks are done in parallel 